Beam is the provider of innovative solutions for neuroscience applications, including EEG, ERP, QEG, neurofeedback, and animal electrophysiology systems. Science Beam's team includes more than 50 neuroscientists, physiologists, and psychologists beside our professional computer and electronic engineers. Over 20 years of experience, we have been able to design and produce lots of high-tech electrophysiology and neuroscience products. Science Beam is an international company that is founded in China and expanded rapidly across the Middle East. We design and produce a full range of biosignal recording systems, including the brain, muscle, and heart from 1 to 128 recording channels in human and animal models. eWave, our powerful EEG and ERP accusation system, is used for both clinical and research purposes. eWave is a portable and lightweight device that has a 24-bit resolution and a thousand samples per second sampling rate for each channel. Using eWave, you can simultaneously record a wide variety of physiological signals including EEG, ECG, EMG, and GSR. For research purposes, Science Beam has offered eWave Plus, that is a precise EEG slash ERP accusation system with 32, 64, or 128 recording channels. This high-tech amplifier can be used for simultaneous recording of EEG with TMS, TDCS, and FNIRS. In this video, we're going to record event-related potentials that are direct results of a specific sensory, cognitive, or motor event. We're going to apply visual stimuli to the subject in a few trials and record the ERPs. To do so, Science Beam has offered an excellent ERP sensor consisting of four LEDs which record ERP exactly at the same time that the stimulus presents on the monitor and the subject sees it. Unlike other ERP accusation systems which record ERP when a command is executed from the monitor, eWave Plus records the ERP signals synchronously with the stimulus presentation, so the delay time is nearly zero. For designing a visual target response, begin with choosing visual stimuli that are easy to distinguish based on the color or shape. Present the stimuli to the left or right side of the screen to respectively induce left or right hand movements.
To register the responses to the stimuli, provide the subject with two big response buttons with very low force requirement to ensure that the subject is easily able to respond. Use response devices that can register button presses accurately and deliver related stimulus markers to the EEG computer in time. Place the cap on the head. In order to ensure that the cap is in the right position, measure the distance between the inion and nasion points. Place the CZ electrode at the halfway point between this measurement. Next, fill the electrodes with a conductive gel in order to maximize the skin contact. Be careful not to apply too much gel as the signal may get distorted. Finally, when a stimulus is presented on the computer screen, use a stimulus delivery and experimental control program that is time accurate to send time locked markers to the data accusation protocol. Instruct the subject to respond as quickly as possible to the target stimuli. Before starting experiment, conduct a short trial session lasting no longer than a minute. This method can help us answer key questions related to underlying cognitive factors that might contribute to different disorders. For more information about the Science Bean products, please visit our website. Let's share the screen. So now we'll see what are the important things in determining what are ERPs. So you might be thinking the peaks and components are similar, like the waveform which we are observing here at 30 milliseconds might, might indicate that at 30 milliseconds, uh, like there's some activity going on at that time point. And, but it is not uh, the way it happens. And we try to understand how it does. And we'll see the role of difference wave in uh, determining this, like overcoming these limitations. And we have the experimental design, how significant it is uh, to have a good experimental design, the filtering process, the pre-processing and the measurement window. So firstly, yeah. So the peaks are things that we observe in our scalp recordings, whereas components occur in the brain and can't be directly observed from the scalp electrodes. So the peaks are the mixture of various components in the uh, in the brain at different time points. And these uh, time points are being studied through various, uh, various measures like using dipole uh, soul localization or difference wave. So here we'll be seeing greater depth, like what actually is happening. So here we see like there are two electrode sites, electrode one and electrode two. And we have uh, electrode one, electrode two, electrode three, and we have the three uh, components, the, these are indicating the location and orientation of the, these three components of these dipoles and each mm, components have a source waveform. So what it is we are getting at the each electrode site. So the contribution of a given source to a given electrode site at a given time is simply the amplitude of the source waveform at that time multiplied, multiplied by the weight between that component and the electrode site, meaning that these amplitudes are multiplied multiplied by these weights. So these components have uh, uh, have weights, and these are being multiplied by the weight between the component and the electrode site by the amplitude of the source waveform. So, for example, if you see uh, the electrode three, this wave. So this is a combination of the weight. 1 comma 3 is like the component 1, electrode 3, component 2, electrode 3, component 3, electrode 3. So this particular point, this particular wave is being generated by these three components and with the help of the amplitude multiplication and the electrode site. So we see how complicated uh, the actual 
electrode three scalp recording is like so all the uh, electrical signals we, we we are observing from the scalp are the contribution of these multiple uh, multiple source uh, multiple generators particle generators and multiple dipoles which have different orientations so we are seeing from these components so we are seeing here the relationship of component waveform with the source waveform so these are some of the examples like how the weights and the amplitudes of the components affect what we observe in the electrodes observe the electrode so these weighted some of the uh, the underlying source waveform is like the you have can observe the difference in weighting so similarly uh, these uh, weights which you observe in the weights and the amplitudes multiplication which you observe in the voltage scalp is being affected by the fissures and gyres so the sequence of positive and negative peaks as a given scalp electrode reflects the sum of many other many of these components each of which has its own time course so individual components uh, identifying identifying the individual components it's difficult that is why there are like multiple uh, underlying dipoles which give a particular uh, then polarity and particular component particular peaks so these components are very uh, difficult to identify because uh, as you know like there is a difference difficulty in identifying the zero line so that is why uh, we have a different approach and we use source localization and various other methods but still it's uh, very hard to uh, get through the underlying components but uh, the the goal here is to like get the maximum accuracy and uh, observation of here these are underlying components for example here the timing of the peaks is often different from the timing of the underlying components so here the earlier uh, we can see on the left side like the early components are seeing it at the 50 milliseconds around 50 milliseconds but in the component it is later so doesn't mean that the, what the peak what peak we are observing on the scalp is similar uh, of the underlying components that are present so these are some of the important uh, phenomena which we need to understand and we need to identify there are usually more components than than there are more uh, peaks so for example this for this basic uh, processing of p1 or like uh, n1 there are uh, like 10 different components we see one n1 and p1 but there are different components 10 different components for this early visual stimulus so you can see how these components are uh, affected it affects this particular peak so yeah similarly here we are seeing that uh, if we take the difference between the targets and the standard at each time point to create a rare minus frequent difference wave we can recover the component that changed so here why we are seeing uh, why we want a uh, target minus standard meaning a difference wave why it is important because uh, if we subtract the target minus standard we get the uh, actual uh, wave or actual component like near to actual component of the underlying pattern we have for example here target minus standard is similar somewhat similar to the c3 component so this is like a better uh, observation better accuracy rather than just simply uh, making a averaged grand average of the target and standard so here it uh, like helps in uh, getting into the underlying uh, basic parameters of those peaks and we can have better accuracy and with help of these a difference wave and source localization techniques uh, we can get to the actual component part but uh, to get this part the difference wave and the underlying uh, pre processing steps and uh, the filtering and experimental design needs to be uh, somewhat rare to like Uh, need to precision like precise experimental design and all so like it also was also mentioned like the filtering as one of the mm, problem in problems in uh, distorting the data it's like the distorted version of what we see in when we filter the eeg or erps because if we see in the first um, uh, illustration the first image that if we filter a low pass filter of uh, 12 hertz it just shifts the onset and the offset 
of this peak. And this is creating a uh, time resolution, like this is in, in fact uh, affecting the time resolution, which is the most important part of ERPs and EG. So this way, this is affecting uh, the uh, interpretation of the ERPs. And similarly, if you have a high pass filter of 2.5 hertz, you can see an artificial peak, like in the filtered waveform we are seeing like it goes down and this is not the actual peak what is there from the signals we observe so like steve luck has propounded a kind of a table where we see like what is important like uh, what parameters are important in when we do a high pass and low pass filtering like if there's a less than 0 0.1 hertz and less than and greater than 220 hertz then it's a good uh, parameter for filtering, like bank pass filtering. Similarly, if we have like more than 0 0.5 hertz, we are seeing here 2.5 hertz uh, high pass filter. So it's like creating artificial peaks. We might not know also, like because we've not seen uh, the original waveforms, and but simply if we are uh, choosing those parameters like based on like previous uh, assumptions or previous papers, like. So it might affect the actual interpretation of our data. So that is why we uh, might follow like the previous uh, filtering options, which the earlier researchers have used and we can see like how it can impact our data. So these are some of the parameters with these uh, experimental design was not there, the slide, but yeah, experimental design uh, very important because uh, how many electrodes we are choosing uh, what are the, uh, what is the fixation time? What is the stimulus time? So those are very important. For example, if there's a stimulus coming for 800 milliseconds and then we have uh, other uh, stimulus coming at 800 milliseconds, then uh, it is like, it will hamper the ERP generation, which means like it can uh, affect the next component. It, it can have an overlapping component. So, which we don't want. In the pre-stimulus, for example, in this, uh, if there's a 800 milliseconds data and we are taking a 200 milliseconds pre-stimulus baseline. So the 200 millisecond baseline, why it is the earlier com earlier uh, stimulus epoch date from the stimulus epoch data, we are taking the 200 milliseconds. So this is like affecting the uh, averaging and the scalp methods. So it's very important uh, how we design the experiment and it needs to be very simple um, so that we are not providing, we're not getting much of artifacts and much of uh, experimental manipulations. So which might affect the mm, ANOVA or the T-test, P-test because increasing the number of ANOVA factors which can affect the like, significance level. And uh, like, for example, it might affect, it might create a significant but bogus results, which is uh, actually not significant, but it might show a true positive, like false positive. Sorry. So now we'll move on. Uh, what are actually the ERP amplitude and latencies? So ERP amplitudes and latencies, we have seen like across what are, we're talking about amplitude and latencies, but actually what are these? Amplitude is the like, height of the wave. And latency is the time taken to elicit that ERP component. So here we are seeing uh, in this diagram. So in the P2 wave, we are taking a measurement window. So 200 to 400 milliseconds, we are taking a measurement window. Measurement window is like
So uh, the peak amplitude and the mean amplitude. So the peak amplitude are uh, the selection of the most positive or negative peak based on the polarity of the component. So uh, we will we'll take a peak, like highest peak on that measurement window and we'll do a statistical analysis on that. And But these peaks are distorted by high frequency noise because it might uh, create a uh, like false peak for example, if you're measuring across conditions and uh, in one electrode site, it might generate a higher peak and, and for one electrode site, it might generate a lower peak. So these uh, measurement of peak amplitude can uh, cause a distortion in understanding the wave. And so for that, we use a local peak amplitude. So what is that? The local peak amplitude is the largest post point in the measurement window surrounded on both sides by lower voltages. So here, like... Uh, so here we are seeing this is the local local peak, which is like surrounded by both lower voltages. So we use local peak rather than the peak amplitude. So and also uh, to overcome this peak amplitude, we use mean amplitude because this is like provides a, a more distorted uh, measurement of the amplitude. So that is why we use mean amplitude, so which is like the taking a mean of uh, the average volt of the specified measurement window, like from the voltage at the specific uh, sample point, each sample point in a time window. And this uh, is very uh, good in terms if there is a variability across uh, subjects and across time points. So if there's an increased noise in the mean amplitude, obviously it will affect the uh, statistics, the uh, statistical power, but uh, it is much better than the peak amplitude if in terms of statistical, statistical power when we use uh, this measure. And these, these are not affected by the Hi. latency. Sorry to interrupt you, but we can't see your screen. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, I'll reshare. We'll start from here, like you guys heard this one, the local peak amplitude. Okay, I'll start again from here. So yeah, we're talking about the amplitude measures, the peak and the mean amplitude. So these are two types of measures in uh, getting the statistical power. So the peak amplitude are uh, we are use a highest point that we select the most positive or negative peak based on the polarity of the component. So here we can see the earlier diagram. So these are the maximum voltage and these are the peak amplitude. And this is the local peak. So what is local peak I was saying? These are, this is the uh, largest point in the measurement window surrounded on both sides by the lower voltages. So we use lower uh, local peak amplitude rather than peak amplitude sometimes for measuring the amplitude. And this peak amplitude is a non-linear measurement, meaning like we need to uh, do this um, statistics, like do this part in a specific manner. Rather like after pre-processing some steps only, we are required to do this peak amplitude. Rather than amp mean amplitude can be done like before averaging or like after averaging, it doesn't matter in terms of the statistical power, but peak amplitude has an effect while we do the measurement. So uh, in terms of uh, greater uh, variability and latency, um, mean amplitude is a better uh, version of uh, acquiring the statistical power. And it is like the mean across all the uh, time points, like all the uh, time points in the window, time window uh, of the voltages. And so this is a better measure of the amplitude. And similarly, we have the peak latency and mean latency. Uh, this peak latency, uh, is observed when uh, we see the uh, maximum uh, voltage across those time point, across those, uh, those uh, time window, like the measurement window. And it very much depended on the polarity of the targeted ERP. And obviously it is affected by the high frequency noise and uh, it can uh, determine the, uh, affect the latency uh, variability. 
to ancillary mean latency is a better version of uh, measuring the latency in the erp component so these two amplitude and latency measures are very important uh, uh, when we understand and uh, do the statistics of uh, the erps now uh, very briefly we'll go through the erp lab so uh, tabular representation of uh, what all we do in the erp lab so this is a uh, matlab based interface in eeg lab a plugin we can use in er uh, in eeg lab to acquire uh, those erp data erp uh, plots so uh, these are some steps before we acquire those plots firstly we need to import eeg data set in eeg lab and this we can uh, do by importing the eeg lab first first we need to download the eeg lab and then we need to plug in the yeah and while importing the eeg lab we can uh, while importing the eeg we can then uh, for the process the data then after importing we can have uh, uh, can see those channels those data using plot channel data in scroll this uh, feature is in the eeg lab only the plot channel data in scroll you can see the points the epochs the various electrode sites the voltages in the plot channel data in scroll like which you which make sure like how many like channels are there codes is there present even markers are there or not then we can import the event markers and channel location so for some eg uh, data we need to look uh, like import the channel locations so there are standard channel locations in eg lab too like some standard from format mni system uh, we are using we uh, need to create event list in er in for the processing for the artifact detection correction and so then we are plotting the erp waveform using a uh, different method uh, different methodologies like uh, difference wave or like a uh, peak amplitude or latency measures we with help of that we use uh, we are getting to the uh, erp waveform plots so we'll see uh, what exactly so these are the erp lab uh, this is the erp lab interface so this is the eeg lab and we have erp lab installed in it so and these are some of the uh, i'll just the photo sorry so these are the uh, specifications we can do uh, in the while doing the processing of erps so like uh, assigning bins uh, having the event list marking uh, channels for rejection uh, averaging plotting the erps uh, choosing specific channels for uh, averaging so we have all these operations and uh, processing steps processing uh, features in erp lab so what i was telling these are the event list list and bins so event list is kind of a text file which is being generated in the erp lab uh, with by the eeg data so here there are different uh, features we can see in this uh, e list so uh, we are we have the items the bin epoch event code so event code are like the stimulus code for example 10 here is like indicating the black positive prime black faces so these are like a particular uh, paradigm of n2p c like discriminating a black and white uh, faces in terms of understanding the discrimination the covert attention uh, paradigm and we can see the onset of the stimulus the difference of the one for one stimulus to the second stimulus in terms of millisecond the durations are there the bin binary flags are there like if you want to assign any uh, type type of particular event like for example for this event code the subject moved like did something like had was drowsy or something so you can assign uh, through this bin flags then you have artifact flags 
can uh, like specifically we can write the person was sleeping or something. So in this artifact flags. So uh, then we have this enable. So we have uh, so the enable means like one, which means like we want to all we want all these event codes, we want all these items to be analyzed for averaging. Then we have bins. So uh, firstly, we uh, want to have the event list where we have all these uh, ERP lab parameters, EG lab parameters of uh, what the data is, what are the codes, and we can see. And then the second part was like, we need to assign the events uh, using bin lister. So uh, what is a bin lister? Like it's a, uh, we use a bin descriptive file, which is like the abstract description of uh, what we want in averaging, data in averaging. So, here is like the bin one and bin two. We have been uh, we have uh, assigned bin one and bin, bin two, which means like firstly we need to. There are three parts. Firstly, we need to uh, give the description like bin one, which in ascending order. Then we have the event code for it. Like uh, we have we want to see like what it is, for which event code this bin is assigned. Then we are giving the description of it. Like black negative prime for bin one. The twenty for the event 20 we are having this description so it will assign these bins in the event list and update the eg uh, update the eg file then uh, we have the extract bin epoch so they were showing in the second after uh, add create event list in our lab uh, then we have uh, assigned events to the specific bins using bin lister after uh, providing the specific bins, like for the, for example, in an oddball paradigm, if you want to assign bins for like uh, rare stimulus, uh, one one bin and the other divin stimulus, a rare stimulus one bin and the frequent stimulus another bin, we we'll use uh, the bin lister. Then we want to extract those bin based epochs. So we want to extract those bins of uh, standards and divins. And with that, we want to further process the data. So this is the interface when we are doing the min based reporting. So here we are uh, mentioning the uh, time range. So this is minus 500 to 1000. So which is this minus 500 is the pre-stimulus uh, voltages. So this minus 500 time we are taking. So it's totally 1500 uh, time point we're acquiring, we're epoching while uh, extracting those bins. And this is the pre-stimulus baseline correction. And then we'll run. Then similarly, after uh, extracting uh, the bin based epochs, uh, through segmentation, uh, we'll have the um, artifact detection. So here there are various measures of uh, artifact detection, uh, like peak to peak amplitude. It's not uh, given in details, but uh, so we have a peak to peak amplitude, mean amplitude. So this way they will uh, uh, will give a threshold and uh, moving window. So these firstly, okay, uh, these are the test periods, which means like uh, this is the time at which uh, the uh, epochs are being generated and the voltage threshold is 100, which means uh, if the voltage, if the particular EG waveform, and if the epochs are above than 100 uh, microvolts, you want to reject those uh, trials or epochs. And there's a moving window is uh, full width is like 200 milliseconds and the window step for ev in every step, we, there are like 100. 100 milliseconds, this average, this peak to peak amplitude is being done. And we can, he's not written, like we can also choose channels, the channels we can do the peak to peak amplitude. Then uh, we can also do filtering based on after popping, if we see like some channels, some areas are like uh, having a uh, like high frequency noise or low frequency noise, we can do a filtering. So we can see a high pass filter, we are, uh, Having a 0 0.8 hertz a high pass filter and low pass filter of 19.4 hertz, which is like a very uh, distorted uh, uh, band pass filtering, which, is, which means like a, from 0 0.8 to 19 hertz, which can affect the ERP data we are observing. So these parameters needs to be like checked with the earlier researches, and we can also check like how it is distorted. We can do once with the high pass with these parameters and like earlier parameters shown by luck, like 0.1 hertz for uh, high pass filter and low pass like 30 hertz or something. So this filtering are being done. 
and you can see uh, these uh, areas which are marked by red these areas will be uh, projected and artifact uh, these are de artifact detection parameters we have seen and these uh, channels and epochs will be uh, detected uh, rejected because these are artifacts and these are i i artifacts i movement because these eye blinks also acts as dipole like so which creates a very high uh, uh, artifact in terms of like in the frontal channels also for like pertaining to the later occipital areas also sometimes and here while uh, so when you want to plot this uh, waveform in, in ERP, the waveform. So after doing a little pre-processing like this, like filtering, uh, extracting the bin box, like firstly the event list is very important. The then bin, then uh, assigning it to the bins, very important. Then after bin epoching and doing a peak-to-peak -peak amplitude or like a mean amplitude, and then artifact detection, rejection, filtering and other pre-processing steps. Uh, it comes to the plotting those ERP waveforms. So here the bins to plot is like, uh, we, if you want to, uh, all the bins, if you have created like for the complex design, if you want, if you have like several bins, if you want to uh, plot those bins in one diagram, all of them. So this is for that, then what time, at what time range you want to plot those ERP waveforms. Then, um, uh, how many channels do we want to plot at the one point time? If you want to uh, exclude the uh, bipolar channels, bipolar uh, EOG channels, electrocardiogram channels, we, want to do, we can do that. Do we want to do the basin correction? Yes. And how do we want to see the topographic map? So these are some of the parameters we can set. And these default parameters also are like good enough uh, as suggested by Steve Luck to go through the first trial to see how the ERPs are being generated. So here, like, uh, uh, shortly you can see, like, a uh, different electrode sites, like how the different early components and late components are generated. But here you can see in FZ, there is some uh, noise, some artifact is there. So for this, if you see some of this type of artifacts, like we can do, uh, like, difference wave. So for difference wave, we, uh, there's a uh, ERP channel operations. Somewhere here, yeah. Yeah, channel operations. You can do that, and you can start. Uh, you can create a difference wave. You can using a bin descriptive file, like we can create a bin three, which is like bin two minus bin one. So in that way, we can then we can see difference wave. We can see the actual underlying component sometimes. So with this, we can have source localization. So you can do that too. So and we can also see these activities, which are like not much activities because you don't want uh, the averaging of all these. So these are some of the parameters and pre-processing. We can also, if you're seeing uh, these type of waveforms and are much uh, noisier, so we can also change the uh, reference site. If you want to change the reference site from vortex to like average of all electrodes or average of all, uh, or, or the average of mesoids, we can do that. You can see, we can play with the data set. Like how do you want, what are the variations are there? How significant it is. So these are some of the uh, like snippets of ERP lab, how uh, we do the ERP lab, uh, in ERP lab, the ER, ERP processing and EG processing before jumping into the plots. So there are much more sophisticated uh, items to explore further. So finally, we come uh, in short, like, what are the advantages of EEG and ERP in short? So we have seen like it's non-invasive. We're not uh, like putting, picking up the need needles in the in the cortex, which is done by like various other techniques. And so these are non-invasive, which has a good temporal resolution and flexible data collection. We as you can see uh, using neurofeedback and the real-time feedback in neuromarketing. We can use the those. Uh, EEG setup and these are low cost, not much, unlike the fMRI, which requires and is very uh, costly and like which does not like provide the real time feedback in terms of like dealing into the actual uh, field. And some of the disadvantages are sure, uh, like spatial resolution. We cannot uh, get inside like these, for example, for this particular component, uh, particular peak, 
uh, like P3 peak, we want to go inside and see what underlying ERP, comp what underlying component are there. It's very difficult to get the source of it in spite of having a, a source localization software because we don't have the error, like minimization error, because as in like this much error is done, like this much we are away from the actual point the actual accuracy. So we don't have that feedback in the source localization software. So it's very difficult to have the special uh, resolution. And obviously we are uh, difficult to get to the deep structures like basal ganglia or like cerebellum because, uh, because of the orientation of the different neurons, different cells. And so it's very difficult to get those deep structures and single neuron, obviously we don't uh, get the single neuron activity and single dipole and then uh, the component also and slower cognitive process in terms of if terms like if you want to understand what is happening when the person is reading a particular paragraph or like when the person is looking like uh, thinking of something that time period so it's very difficult to uh, guess those uh, to extract those ERP components in those time points yeah so we have these uh, disadvantages and disadvantages in ERPs and uh, EEG. Thank you. And you can ask questions or comments or any feedback. I want to add some more points. We can do that. And these are the references and you can check out some of the resources, which are very important, like the understanding those ERP components. It, it has both research and clinical based uh, conference and how they are have different paradigms and manipulations. This is a very good book to start off with the ERPs. And it is very nicely written, simply explained. You can go to uh, these and surely you can join the ERP bootcamp, which is very free uh, the, from the Steve Lux uh, ERP bootcamp. And a uh, basic paper by Picton et al. 2000 uh, of the ERPs to study cognition. So these are some of the books and resources, references you can you guys can uh, refer and go deeper into the uh, yeah. I'll stop sharing and we can have the questions. You guys can have questions. Uh, can you give a demo of how one can import different events on the same plot? Mm. Demo, it's a little difficult because uh, the interface, I don't have the interface of this uh, PC actually. Mm. Can I give a demo of how can you import different events on the same plot? So yeah, initially while importing, uh, sorry. Should I just give one So yeah, in here, like, uh, so in this uh, slide, we are seeing like there are different uh, variations we can do in uh, while uh, having a, having those particular events. So here we can uh, add or uh, extend or delete the events. So this is manipulatable, like this we can manipulate and extract. So here I think you can, uh, what do you want here? Like, one second, I'll answer here. So while importing different events, it is uh, it will be showing on the same e-list file I was showing, like the e-list uh, text document. So that is there. How many trials? Okay. Oh yeah. Thank you. Uh, so two type of events, as you showed nine and twelve. Mm. So I'm not very clear, Rafia, what were you asking? Say two type of events, can you like elaborate on that? Mm -hmm. 
until then uh, like okay. how many trials are recommended for a, an eeg study and how to how do we determine this one basic uh, thing how many trials are recommended uh, so it that depends very much on the a uh, component we're trying to study so if we are studying uh, say a uh, basic sensory components like p1 n1 or uh, n2pc so for that it requires a lot of trials say 100 more than 100 trials are required that is like prescribed like sometimes but if you're studying some like slow or like late components uh, relatively later uh, like uh, lesser trials are uh, suggested but that depends very much like you can see previous researches like how they are uh, how they how many trials they have used accordingly you can uh, manipulate yours but uh, for that you can have a pilot study so pilot study is very important to determine like uh, actually you are getting that those components what that we hypothesize i think you can have that mm -hmm. Okay, I want to see the both rare and uh, uh, frequent events on the same EEG plot. Yeah, okay, okay, I'll share. So, so this is like uh, where we can see both rare and uh, frequent. Uh, EEG plot and but this is like it's not the subtraction of the activity we are seeing it's not the difference wave but these are just the activity of the rare and uh, the frequent but we want to see the actual underlying component somewhat near to that so for that it is recommended that we have a difference wave so it is not here we didn't plot the difference wave here but this is just the rare and the frequent the uh, frequent and the dewin stimulus um, erp plots Uh -huh. One second. Let's just stop sharing. So, how to events on the same? How uh, how to import those e events? So, these are done by through uh, bins, the bin descriptive file. So, in bins, we uh, mention those uh, event codes when uh, rare stimulus was present. So, there uh, from there we uh, kind of average those. using those uh, bin descriptive file and we just proceed there okay so yeah here we uh, plot all the bins like for example if we are saying 1 2 3 1 is for rare uh, 2 is for frequent so both the bins will be plotted here when we see the plots so this is the bin uh, the erp plotting interface in the erp lab so here we uh, mention accordingly what at what time point we want to uh, extract the data the epochs of all the bins we are extracting and then we want the channels then we want the pre uh, like the baseline correction or what topographic uh, map we want and these are the polarity uh, the polarity is up so this way uh, we can import those events rare and frequent like using uh, like mentioning as a abstract uh, in the abstract descriptive file like in the bins using event list and bdf i think this is a little clear yeah i'll, I'll share okay let's see I'll open the. But both event codes for RT and square are showing. Okay, it's not downloading this JPEG. One second.
want um oh these are inbuilt like so uh, when we are uh, designing the experiment we are coding one for the rear and one for the deviant stimulus so while uh, taking the eg uh, like live eg so we are seeing those uh, stimulus like event markers there that is why uh, it's there on the slides. I think it's clear now, Rafia. Yeah, I'll share the email ID. For the PowerPoint presentation. How to see a both at the same plot? So yeah, we have the configurations. I don't uh, have the slide actually, uh, but uh, in that interface only, there's options like where we can like import those with the rare and for example, the RT and square together and we can see and at one plot. So I can share some of the resources here, one second. You guys can check out uh, ERP core. The presentation. Let's share. One sec. Here is the uh, PowerPoint presentation. This is kind of the ERP lab a manual uh, the GitHub in the lock. You can check this out too. Uh, we have data sets uh, too. These are the one second.
is the um, things to the data set. Okay, then for any of the resources, you can uh, email me directly. No problem, and we can have a discussion. Has any suggestion or you want to come in? Uh, anyone? And we can end here. We have uh, one more from uh, the new match. You can check this out too. It's from the new match academy, uh, the basics of the human EEG and ERPs. Thank you, Google. Do you guys have any question? Like we can then head back. Thank you, Karina. Okay.